For the 3006, we've decided on a 165 grain Nosler AccuBond. Uh, we have a proper powder charge of 55.0 grains of IMR4451, you can see setting on the bench, which are charged in the cases. What we now need to do is to seat the bullet. I've set up the Reading Competition Micrometer Seating Die. Uh, it's a little bit different setup than you would with a, a resizing die. You don't want the bottom of the die to touch the shell holder. Uh, you want to set it up about two turns higher. Now this has a spring-loaded feature for precise depth, so it's a little bit different than I'm going to show you with the 458. But it's got a micrometer adjustable seating depth measured in thousands. We're pretty close here by feel, but we're going to have to see exactly what can happen. We're going to take one of these 165 grain nozzlers, set it loosely in the case. At that stage of the game, we're going to slide it up into the die and shell holder and work that press very gently upward. And you should see that seat the bullet. Now we need to measure it because according to the Nosler number seven manual, we can have a maximum cartridge overall length of 3.340. So with the RCBS electronic caliper, we'll measure the length we have. Let's see here, my old eyes. We have 3.368, so we need to dial that down 25 thousandths. So let's bring that down exactly to the zero mark, precisely. Let's see if that worked. We'll then push that bullet a little bit deeper in the case. And with those calipers again, we're going to check our case length overall. 3.343. So we need to make another minor adjustment of three thousandths. As you can see on the dial. One more time up into the case. Let's see what that did. 3.340 on the money. Our seating die is now properly set up. And for every charge case, once you put your powder in, you can simply take another bullet, loosely seat it up on top of the case, put it into the shell holder, run it up into the die, presto changeo, rearrangeo, we should have the proper seating depth. And we'll just verify that on a second one. 3.340. Perfect. So our 3006 case is primed, charged, resized with a bullet seated. Take her hunting. Away we go. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, some different cases such as the 458 Winchester and a couple of pistols. We're now going to talk about the 458 Winchester Magnum. It's a bit of a different story than the 3006 in the fact that the bullets we're going to use have what they call a cantilever. A cantilever is a small rim grooved into the bullet itself and what the goal for that is is to allow this belled case mount, this flared case we made, to roll crimp and bite around that bullet to hold that bullet in place and ensure proper tension. What we need to do to get that done is to adjust our Redding seating die. Inside the die itself, there is a small shelf so that when that ram is extended upward, the mouth of the case will hit that shelf and it will roll it inward. It'll take a bit of experimentation with different pieces of brass. Uh, I've got this one set up already. But you need to bring it down until you get just the amount of crimp, not too much and not too little. At that point in time, this cedar adjustment, which goes up and down, can be adjusted for, for the particular bullet we're using. We're using the, the Nosler Solid 500 grain 458 diameter bullet perfect for Cape Buffalo or Elephant or Hippo, but it's, it's demonstrative for any bullet with a cantilever in any straight walled case. So we've got a suitable powder charge of 70 grains of IMR 4895. The case is resized, reprimed, and flared. So here we go with the seating process. When we're done, that bell should be removed and should actually be turned inward slightly around the cantilever of that bullet. So again, I'm going to gently place the bullet into the case set it into the shell holder and run it up into the die. 
what we have here, if you can see, that bell has been taken out and that case is slightly rolled over into the cantilever of the bullet. Now, that cantilever is dictated by Nosler for a proper seating depth. The maximum cartridge length for the 458 Winchester Magnum is 3.340 inches. We can be okay if we're a little bit shy of that, but that's the maximum that will function through the standard rifles magazine. And because of the flat nose on this bullet, we are achieving a cartridge overall length of 3.318. So we're well below the SAMI specs. We're seated to the cantilever of the bullet with a proper roll crimp. We're ready to go hunting. Let's talk about loading the 357 Magnum case. Now, because it's a straight walled case like the 458, it needs to be flared at the end before we go ahead and seat the bullet. Uh, we've reprimed it and we've got a proper load of our CFE pistol, which will give us about, I don't know, 1100 feet per second with this particular bullet. What we're then going to do is use two dies. We're not going to use a, a combination die for crimping. We've got the Redding seating die set in the, in the Ultra Mag Press, and we also have Redding's profile crimp die, which is going to not only put that same kind of roll crimp that we used in the 458 Winchester Magnum, but it's going to put a taper crimp down along the wall of the case where the bullet sits. So you won't get that unsightly budge, uh, bulge, but at the same time, the bullet won't move because of the roll crimp. So you've got the, the bullet seated firmly in place, but isn't only held in place by the roll crimp. So let's demonstrate the seating process. I'm going to loosely put the bullet on top of the primed case and run it up into the sizing die, giving us a seating depth which should put the case mouth just about onto the cantilever. If you can see that, you can we'll get a good crimp onto the cantilever. I'm now going to switch between the Redding Cedar die and pick up the Redding Profile Crimp die, which I've adjusted to give just the proper amount of uh, both roll and pro, uh, taper crimp into the same cartridge. And when we're done, we should have a finished product. And there you have it. You can see you've got a really good roll crimp and a taper crimp with no unsightly bulge going down the case. We're ready to take our pistol to the range. The last cartridge I want to talk to you about is the 45 ACP. Now, the 45 ACP is a unique case in the fact that it is a rimless case, yet head spaces off the case mouth. It's the case mouth that prevents the cartridge from going too far into the chamber. What we need to know for reloading purposes is that even though it needs to be flared and then squeezed back down during the seating process, we can't put a roll crimp where that, where that brass is bent over a cantilever and, and cause to bite because it'll, it'll defeat the purpose of head spacing. What we need to use is a taper crimp, which wedges this brass along the bullet wall during the process. So we're going to do this in two phases. We're going to use a seating die and then we're going to use a crimp die for the final stage. What I have here to, to show you, I've got two Redding seating dies. I've got their standard die, which is adjustable via this little knurled knob up here on top. And I've got their competition seater die, which is graduated in thousandths and has a, a tension spring inside so that you can readily adjust your, your seating depth if you change bullets in your reloading session very easily and accurate. I mean, that micrometer is, is well calibrated. So as, as many decent rounds as I've loaded with a standard die, let's go ahead and use that, that uh, Redding Competition Cedar die. So we'll screw that down in the press. Uh, we're using Hodgdon CFE as a propellant for this particular cartridge, using 7.7 .7 grains to give us just over 1,100 feet per second with these 185 grain Nosler Custom Competition hollow point bullets. Let's put that uh, bullet loosely in the case and run it up into the press. Now the Nosler manual tells us that our maximum cartridge overall length is 1.275. Just let me zero the calipers and we'll measure this cartridge we just made. 1.274, so we're right in the realm there, within a thousandth. The next thing we need to do is put that taper crimp on the outside of the cartridge. So I'm going to switch between the competition cedar die and Redding's taper crimp die. 
what that'll do is uh, make sure that our bullets don't go anywhere as far as their seating depth within the case as the action of the pistol works back and forward. So I'm going to set that in the shell holder and run that up into here. And voila, you have a finished cartridge. You can see the taper crimp on it. It's got a good square case mouth so that it will headspace properly. This is, uh, this is one of those points where I want to talk to you about an alternative type of press. This is a fantastic Ultra Mag from Redding. Uh, their Big Boss 2 single stage press is also good. But Redding makes a T7 turret press, which has a round head with seven threaded receptacles for seven different dies. Uh, it's still, it's not a progressive, it only performs one operation at once, but you can easily see where the 45 ACP is concerned, where we could have a resizing die, a flaring die, a seating die, and then a taper crimp die, and it could get rather tedious switching between them. When you use that T7, it allows you to, if let's say you made a mistake or you found more brass you wanted to do, with the turn of the turret head, you could just switch between those dies and they're all set up.